Hi, I'm Kathleen and this is my tiny bell house here in the Lake Dallas Tiny Home Village. <laughs> if you can't tell, my, <laughs> my theme is Belle from Beauty and the Beast. She has been my, like, I first saw the movie when I was five and I was captivated by that movie and uh, I also am a travel agent that specializes in one of them is Disney travel. I also love Universal and Star Wars and Marvel, but Belle has always been my favorite character. You know, she loves books. She wants adventure. Like that's, she doesn't, she was one of the first princesses that didn't need a man, like didn't want a man. That's not what she wanted. She just wanted to go out and explore and go out and uh, be her own person. And I always admired that. Pretty much she just accidentally got married <laughs> at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but she wanted adventure in her life. So I like to think I, I theme this of Belle if she never met the beast, but she was able to still go out there and have her own adventure. And this is her tiny house. This is the tiny house she took traveling around the world because that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to go see adventure. I love traveling myself and I feel like actually living in a tiny house um, really supports that type of lifestyle and I love helping other people plan their vacations. I literally could spend four hours uh, helping someone and researching and I love the paperwork of <laughs> travel agencies which sounds really weird but I actually really like doing it. So. I've been living in my tiny house for about six months. She is from Decathlon Tiny Homes. She is an Athena model and she is eight by 28 feet, which is a roughly around 240 square feet, not including the storage loft that I have. So when you look at my tiny house, it looks a little colorful than I think a lot of tiny houses are. And that's intentional. My theme is Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And I love her blue provincial dress is what they call it. And it's a blue dress with a white apron. So if you can tell, this is kind of the blue that I found that was the best closest to that dress. And of course the white trim. One of my favorite things about the outdoor part of my tiny house is actually the plaque that is on my tiny and it says bell on it it has the name every decathlon tiny home comes with this little plaque tells its certification that it's rv certified and all these things but it also says the name of the tiny house decathlon tiny homes really knows this particular community very well because there are three athenas right next to each other we're all three in a row just how it happened it wasn't something we planned on so come on in Welcome to the Tiny Bell House. I think one of the first things people say about the interior of my tiny house that's probably a lot different than most tiny houses is the lack of windows or like big windows. When you're talking about design, a lot of people say, you know, if you have really big windows, that'll make the house be much bigger. However, Texas is hot. All that heat coming in, that's just gonna make the house heat much quicker. So I liked having these little small windows that are up here and over here. And then the window that's actually in my bedroom, I never close that door. So all that light just like immediately comes through here in the kitchen my mom would say would be the heart of any home for her making food was her way of showing love and even though i'm not that much of a cook i don't like to cook a lot i always felt the need to have at least a very good kitchen so that if i wanted to cook i could so they decided to give me the biggest sink they've ever put in a tiny house <laughs> this sink is a farmhouse sink the part that I wanted was having two different sections. It's one for washing and one for sanitizing or drying if I needed it. And of course, there are some major Bell or Beauty and the Beast nods. Uh, this rose, it's a fake rose, I got the first time I saw Beauty and the Beast, the Broadway show that came to Seattle. 
and I actually had taken my mother to see it. I bought her ticket and she was the one that originally took me to see the movie so I thought it was really nice to take her to see the theater show. So that is the rose from that. And then this little dome, they sell them at Ikea for like super cheap. So it was just an easy little decoration that people, when they go by it, they're like, oh, that's so cute. And then I got this at Box Lunch. If you're ever looking for any type of merchandise from any type of fandom, from like The Office, from Disney movies, from Marvel, from uh, anime shows, like they have pretty much everything. Uh, one of the my favorite parts of my kitchen is this little cabinet. It slides out. The thing about tiny houses is that for storage, they always say to build up problem is I'm pretty short so I don't really put a lot in the top shelves that I because if I need it I have to get out a stool and that just takes extra time down here is all of the glassware that I use consistently but since I'm a single person I pretty much clean the same two plates and the same like mug over and over again and on this side of the kitchen has some of my more interesting appliances Normally in any decathlon tiny home, they put a insert induction cooktop, but I asked them not to put it in. And instead I wanted this whole entire space for prep work. So if I didn't need to cook and I just wanted to chop vegetables, or even if I just wanted a place to put groceries while I'm putting things away, like I wanted all of this space. So what I did instead is that right over here underneath the uh, refrigerator is that I have this little drawer. It has these removable uh, induction cooktops. I have two of them, but I've only ever used one at a time. And also I did a lot of research and I found this wonderful, wonderful air fry oven from Ninja that folds away, but when you wanna use it, you just fold it down. And it, it's pretty decent size. It can have like a small chicken in there if you want. It air fries, air roasts, bakes, broil. You can put frozen pizza in there. Like you could put pretty much anything in there. <laughs> so sometimes I will push this all the way to the back and I'll do prep. I can also put a um, the, one of the cook plates right here. And then also sometimes I will use this table right here as extra like prep work if I need it. This microwave right here is actually a convection microwave oven. I now technically have two ovens where some people only have one. So it's really nice. This is my junk drawer because everyone should have a junk drawer. And of course, when you have a kitchen, you need to have a place to put all of your food. So I actually have a really nice sized pantry and in here has all my food but also a place, especially if you have dogs, it gives me tons of room for a trash can and recycling, which if, it's, especially if it's a little smelly, all I have to do is just close the door, which makes it really nice. Plus it also acts as a, as an emergency storm shelter, kind of. <laughs> I actually have tested it where Becca and I went, like took everything out and we went inside. Like if there was an emergency and I couldn't go anywhere else, that would probably be the best place to go in a major storm. So <laughs> random things you don't think of that you'll need. And now that we have the non-perishable items area where we store the cold stuff is my apartment sized uh, fridge and freezer. This is also where I put all of my magnets that I get. I have a lot of them. It pretty much fits everything I need. Sometimes it takes a little bit of Jenga in order to fit everything that I need, but I can go two weeks without going to the grocery store. So I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, but I've weirdly always had a call to live in Texas. I bought a three bedroom, two bath uh, house, which was the same price as a two bedroom, one bath condo in Seattle. And I still made money off of it. <laughs> I felt like I had made it as an adult that I had done everything I was supposed to do. But to be honest, I wasn't very happy. A lot of it was getting into more credit card debt um, just to 
pay for the upkeep of a house. I didn't even have that big of a house. It was only about 1300 square feet, which isn't a lot, but there's still a lot of things you have to do to maintain a house. Like you have to do yard work. If there's ever a leak, you have to pay for those types of things. Like, and it was causing so much anxiety. But during the pandemic, I, I had a roommate to help pay for the mortgage. She worked in a bar. Everyone was concerned about like what would happen if we got in contact with each other. So I just tried to stay in my room for as much as possible. And I just ended up started working from my bedroom and my, and my bed, which is a movable bed, is way more comfortable than any chair that you could ever sit in. So I was I was comfortable and I was getting my work done faster. And I only left my room to uh, go to the bathroom, to cook in the kitchen. And that was it. I didn't need to be out in the living room because I had a TV and my bedroom. And I realized, wow, this bedroom, I could just live here. If there was a ki if there was a little kitchenette, I could just live in this bedroom. The original Athena model that I saw, one of the main reasons why I chose this particular model was the bathroom. This bathroom was probably the least that I changed out of the standard bathroom that they have at Decathlon Tiny Home Bathrooms, especially in their Athena models. It's actually quite big for a tiny house bathroom. And the fact that I'm able to fit both a washer and dryer in here and a toilet, a shower, and a sink with lots of drawer space, more storage than I actually need in a bathroom. <laughs> My sink is where definitely probably the most Beauty and the Beast or French country. I loved having this kind of like old timey classic faucet instead of like something super modern. Very important in any tiny house bathroom, you need a vent. So that is my vent. And it's pretty quiet actually. I Sometimes I have to check if it's on because <laughs> it's really quiet. And above my bathroom is my storage loft. If you put it an egress window up there, you technically could use it as like a second bedroom, but it's pretty tiny. And I personally <laughs> not going to go up there except to put luggage goes up there. This is a ladder that is included in all Athena tiny houses. It's very, very sturdy, which is good because <laughs> if it wasn't, it'd be a little treacherous getting up. But it's another reason why I wanted a bed on the bottom floor because there's no way I would want to have to bring this out every single time because it's quite heavy. Now moving into my living room, which is what I really wanted to be able to have a living room in my tiny house. Right here by the front door is kind of like my catch-all. It's where I put my purse keys. Um, as I said, in when I talked about my kitchen, sometimes I will, I'll do prep work here. Or I'll, I just need to put a pot there. I'll put it right there. The great part about this is that it can actually be moved and it can actually go underneath the couch. So I can use it as like a table if I have guests and we can use it to um, have dinner on. Um, if I want to work from my couch, um, this is a great desk to actually work from. I love, love this couch. It's an Ikea couch. And because I was using Ikea's floor plan, I was able to configure which couch I could use. So it's perfect. My dog likes to be in my world. <laughs> she will also be on this couch if I'm like cooking. Um, she likes to be in her pet bed or sit up there <laughs> while I'm cooking because she likes to be close to the food in case, in case I drop food, which definitely happens. And then um, over here in my uh, TV area, I wanted a place to put all of my books and all my yearbooks. And I think if anything I had to downsize that was kind of the hardest was probably my books. Now I just keep my old high school yearbooks and I do keep a selection of books because Belle really likes books. So of course I have to have books in a tiny house. Um, but the thing I do with books is like Belle, they're rotating. I try not to really keep books forever. I usually go to like half price books or used bookstores and I buy them and then I sell them back or I donate them and then I buy more. I try to get out new ones. The, my probably favorite thing in my living room though, um, besides my couch, are my three Belle photos. This one is just a print my mom bought me, but these two are actually painted. This one was a friend of mine. He asked me like, hey, it's your birthday. What do you want? And I said, well, I like Beating the Beast. He's like, you like the rose? 
he painted that for me. So that's just really special that someone just decided to paint me <laughs> like a rose photo. And then this one is my pride and joy because if you look under here, it says Belle to Kathleen, love Paige O'Hara. Paige O'Hara is the original voice actress of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, the Disney animated film. I actually got to meet her and she signed it and that is actually her painting. Like she actually painted that herself. She is an official Disney artist and she paints her own Beauty and the Beast paintings, which is pretty special. And I can't, I almost cried when I, when I met her. It was so amazing and I'm so proud of having that. And as you can see, I have more of my Starbucks mugs. These are all my latest Disney ones, but on here, um, I have kind of like my interesting trip ones. And then, as I said, anything you own at a tiny house should have more than one use. It's where I put my remotes <laughs> is in my mugs. They might as well have a use in here. So with all the upgrades and sales tax, my tiny house is about $85,000, which I think is a pretty good deal. Um, it's one of the reasons why I chose Decathlon. They weren't the cheapest, but they were the most bang for your buck. Like I found other like cheaper tiny house communities, but they required you to finish out more of the stuff like the painting and maybe the building shelves and things like that. Stuff that I didn't want to do because I am not handy. I also got a tiny home loan that I got through Liberty Bank. One of the only banks in the country that'll actually give you a mortgage type of loan for a tiny home. Uh, most places when they're giving you a loan for your tiny home, they'll do a personal loan, which means higher interest rates and shorter payback times. So mine is a 15 year loan with a 6.5% interest, which is amazing for anything that's not a mortgage. Uh, it's actually what mortgages people are paying now. <laughs> the way mortgages are going right now. So I'm actually paying what they are. And the place that I spend most of my time is back here in my bedroom. So the biggest thing of my bedroom is obviously my bed. It's one of those movable beds, which was why I really wanted a tiny house that centered around it because I can have my feet up and also elevated so that it helps with a lot of health benefits. So it kind of looks weird, but trust me, it's very, very comfortable. Also, what I have is, I don't know if you've ever heard of them, they're beddies. Um, I'm horrible about making my bed. And it's basically a glorified sleeping bag. <laughs> but it um, actually acts as like a blanket that zips up. So if you wanna make your bed, all you have to do is zip it up instead of like tuck it in because this part acts as a fitted sheet, but you go inside just like a sleeping bag. When I'm working, I'll work like this and I'll usually be higher up. So my I will raise my bed so that it's optimal that I'm sitting up. But then when I sleep, I raise, I put it down so that I can sleep. And then if I'm just watching TV, it's in between that. Big thing I changed in the Athena model is normally they have the, a bed facing this way, going this way, and they'll have the door on this part. I wanted it in the center so that the light could shine all the way out into the living room to, again, because I didn't have so many windows, I needed that for more light. And then up here is my mini split. All Athena models come with a mini split and I actually got a bigger one so that it blows a lot more air to get a lot through the rest of the house. And I keep it pretty much Arctic because I like to be cold and I, especially at night, I like to pretty much burrow in my bed and that's how I sleep. So instead of a big wardrobe, I decided to get two kind of half wardrobes that are hanging. Then I have a nice wardrobe here that fits all of my clothes. And of course I have my TV because I need a TV while I'm in my bed. And because I work from here, I like to have the news on while I work. And when I say news, I mean Disney YouTube news or tiny house YouTube news. <laughs> That's what I'm usually watching, but also local news as well. Probably my biggest mistake that I've made in a tiny house. As you can see wh where the wall separation, there's an opening. That's standard. Originally, I asked them to make it a full wall. The reason why I wanted it fully closed is so, so if someone else was staying with me, we could be completely separate. But because 
I had it. Uh, I had the wall fully enclosed. I had to leave the door open in order for the air to get out or else it would get really hot in there. So it almost defeated the purpose <laughs> because I thought I would actually have, I actually ended up having less privacy with the full wall. So now I actually paid them to come back out and take out that part of the wall. <laughs> Sometimes you need to actually trust them when they make design choices. So yeah, that, that was my big mistake. I literally Googled tiny home village or tiny home community and Lake Dallas tiny home village was one of the first things that popped up for Dallas. And I realized, wait, that's only like 10 minutes away from here. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, I got really, really lucky. So my monthly mortgage, my mortgage payment, it's, it's a little over 500, it's like 505, something like that. And my rent will be $600. So about $1,100 a month for rent. Even as a studio, finding an $1,100 a month studio this close to downtown Dallas, like, <laughs> you, <laughs> good luck. yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck. And also in a decent area, like, Lake Dallas, it's a small city, so it kind of feels like a small town, but it's literally right next to the freeway that goes immediately. You're either in Denton, a big small city, if that makes sense, but also not very far from Dallas. And I can also quickly go to Fort Worth as well, both Fort Worth and Dallas. And I'm pretty much close to everything I need. And actually the two major airports, I'm still 20 minutes and 25 minutes from each air, airport. So I think that I, I used to live like an hour and a half away from airport. So in fact, I can pretty much go anywhere. If you couldn't tell, I'm a, I'm an extrovert. So <laughs> but the problem is I work from home. So I do not get a lot of social interaction. And when I lived in a house and actually when I lived in a condo, I got a dog just so I could have another being to talk to. Nowadays, unless you're in a small town, you don't talk to your neighbor. Like people just don't talk to their neighbors at all. Or maybe they'll talk to them just saying hi when they take out the garbage. But when I moved here, everyone was like immediately so happy to talk to me. Automatically they're like, hey, if you need any tools, I've got tons of tools if, if you need stuff. Or hey, if you need this, let me know. I didn't have to ask. Like people just automatically offered. I think that is part of the personality of someone who may want to live in a tiny house community especially one that's like this that we're we're so small and so right next to each other that we kind of have to have some communication with each other so that might not be good for some people who want to be a hermit or just want to have like open air but i wanted people that i could talk to because i missed being around a lot of people we have um sometimes we have just random bonfires if we're like it's a beautiful night hey let's let's all like go around the fire and then once a year we have a dog birthday party where all the it's everyone's dog's birthday <laughs> watching our video and for stopping by tiny house expedition i'm alexis and i'm christian don't forget to like comment and subscribe and for more tiny home tours and stories click the videos below and join us on instagram for bonus content including face-to-face -face conversations with us <laughs> we hope to see you there all right thanks guys have a good one